We were young working class kids by and large. Many of us had never travelled abroad before, never stayed in a hotel, not flown. When Pete Smith and I were going through the airport, we thought, oh, what are we going to do on the plane? Let's get a travel chess set. So we went to the duty free and bought a little magnetic travel chess set, which I had in my pocket. It was the first couple of months of mag uh, electronic scanning at airports. So as we went through the airport, we're going through electronic scanning. I've got these pack of magnets in my jacket pocket. So as we went through, these things go bright red, throbbing beams, buzzing alarms, people running from every direction, grab hold of me. But it was just this back of the chest there. <laughs> we landed in this other world. It wasn't just that it was a foreign place and different, but then you had to come to grips with the reality of apartheid, the reality of a white and a black uh, population treated entirely differently, living entirely differently. I suppose to describe Johannesburg, which is where we were in 1971, at night, after we'd arrived, we went out to find uh, something to eat, and the streets were deserted. There was almost a sense of fear and paranoia, and we didn't understand it uh, as we went out. A few white people wandering around, the odd policeman here and there, really quiet, in the middle of a great city. And then, first thing in the morning, the streets literally turned black as the thousands and thousands of African workers came in from the townships through the main railway stations, taxi stations, bus stations, and went to their places of work. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, just couldn't come to terms with it at all. I've, I've had no other experience in my life where there was such a separation between potential perception of something and, and that reality. We had no idea, actually, when you look back on the way people were treated and the way people suffered, you couldn't be prepared.